Hey, Floss Tube. Pam here, stitching between the lines. Um, today is Tuesday, January 23rd. It's been a couple weeks since my last Floss Tube. We all say that. We all say how long it's been. So I feel like we should say it's been two weeks since my last confession. Um, <laughs> Floss Tube. Anyway, I leave for Florida tomorrow. So I needed to have all kinds of things like wrapped up, done, shown to the point that they're done because when I'm there, I'm pretty much the only thing I have is a winter sampler. So I showed on my Instagram um, a progress picture of where I'm starting, which is pretty much where I left off last summer. I haven't touched it since, mainly because I knew it was going to get a long stretch of time coming up here. So anyway... I've been busy, busy, busy. Um, my daughter's back in school, so <laughs> things around the house are quiet. Settled down a little bit. Um, so I have less things and appointments and things and shopping and errands and whatnot that need to be done. So it's always the way after the holidays anyway, right? Uh, so anyhow, let's see, let's see, let's see. I, um, sh um, I, I don't always want to say you saw this on the Instagram because... A lot of you didn't. Um, I did the most recent two um, stitch alongs that Priscilla and Chelsea had. The first one was um, for Snowfall. I'm reaching for it. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I try. I have all things neatly piled up, but it's not always in the right order because the size of what things are don't always fit like in a pile and a you know whips and FFOs, whatever, whatever, whatever. So anyway, I did the two um, stitch alongs, Winter Wonderland. No, this was the second one. Sorry, wrong pattern. Let me look again. Let's try that again. Uh, let me see. <laughs> I hope I have the pattern. I have the done project so I can show it to you. Yeah, I'll find it when we're done, I bet. I did winter or forest snowfall. I'm sorry. That was the first one. Started on Chelsea's birthday. We we ordered, you know, you could order it and get it in the kit. And there was lots to say about the thread colors and the fabric color. I changed my fabric. I had the blue in called for in the pattern was deep fennel. Classic color works, I think. Boy, I meal prepared and I've been organizing my stuff for days. So I'm... If I come across the pattern, we'll revisit some of those things. Um, I believe it was Classic Color Works Deep Fennel, and it was a bit green, and it wasn't what I wasn't loving it, and I saw on Facebook other people weren't loving it. Um, so anyway, I had some Deep Fennel from who knows when in my stash, so I just pulled that out, and I pulled out a piece of fabric um, that... I don't know what to say it's called. It's like Stormy Day or something. Stormy Skies. I can't find any of it online, so I can't buy any more. I got it when I was in Minnesota at Stitchville. So here is my completed Forest Snowfall, which completed FFO'd the whole nine yards in this. I put it in a barn wood frame. One of my quilt shops in the general area also has wool, applique, wool, and whatnot. Um, which is not uncommon in quilt stores anymore. And one of the things that they sell is quite a collection. This is just, it's a hole. It looks like it's a discoloration, which, of course, it's a hole. Um, they have quite a collection of barn wood frames, so I went there specifically to look. Took a while to find one. Didn't get a splinter when I was looking. No, that happened after I was, when I was framing it. So I did, I stretched it. I didn't use sticky board because... I like to put batting behind my piece. I like that little bit of puff it, puffiness. If you have any threads or um, anything that might cause a little bulge, like because the, the way the threads lay, um, batting helps. Plus, it just adds a look I like. So anyway, there's my framed piece, and I'm thrilled with it. I, um, being that it's a barn wood frame, it just comes, if there's no hardware or anything like that, I'm going to, um, I'll be able to hammer in a little bit of a hook, but I just had a piece of um, cardboard that I could glue to the back. So I'm quite delighted with that. Um, I'm going to try not to get any more splinters. 
that was no fun because it was in my finger where when I sew, my needle touches that finger. So it's all better now. And then I did the second one, uh, Winter Wonderland Little House Needleworks, which actually started just maybe 10 days ago was the start. But this really is a quick one. This wasn't even, this was in my, one of my stitching places that's not even my primary stitching spot. And I finished it in a week. So Winter Wonderland. This one I had in my stash. So I got it way back when this pattern came out in 2009, I think. Oh, 2006. Where's that? And I know, I know I'm going to show this and I know it's going to cause a stir because it was a limited edition, but I had it in my stash. And when this pattern came out, this is something that came with it. You could buy with it was um, a thread keep. I had to put in there. So it is on there. Um, eh, it's on there. And it's cute. I didn't change any colors because I wanted it to match. And um, you can see, you can put needles and threads and stuff in there. And it's really cute. This little so snowman is so cute. Uh, he would make an adorable ornament. So I couldn't tell you what the fabric is because... It's been a long time since 2006, um, and the fabric and the threads were all in with the pattern. So I got a cat that just jumped up here, so we'll see what happens. So here's the thing. I love to do a stitch along, which is one of the reasons why I'm willing to show what I bought or what I've kitted up. In, I'm keeping my eye on the cat because this isn't going to go well. Um, I, he has just realized, Koopy, Koopa Cooper, he's just realized I'm home because he hears my voice. I had been out grocery shopping and whatnot. Um, okay, so where were we? Uh, the stitch alongs. I love to do a stitch along. I love to see people's progress on things and whatnot. Um, and Priscilla and Chelsea do them because lots of people ask them to do them. I think, I think, uh, I can't be held to it because you never know. Um, I think I will do the stitch alongs if I have the pattern. I have such a large collection of things, unless it's a pattern that I love and can't wait to do, you know, like Farmhouse Christmas. Um, I don't think I'm going to buy the pattern. Anything's possible. But if I can pull it out of my stash, that is a bonus, bonus, bonus. So I'm going to see how that works out. You never know. So another little finish I had was out of my collection of Little Fall projects that I pulled out last fall and was working on. So you and I and friends, Jack Cat, let's see, which I've had forever, forever, forever in my stash. So I did this little guy. He's not done on a piece of 36 count something or other. Um, just a rant, like I, a random little piece. And he came out really cute, but man, there was a lot more stitching in that thing than I imagined. Totally, a ton more. So he's cute. When I was working on him, I had his body done and his tail done, and I was working on his head. He looked like a monkey because he didn't have cat ears yet. He just, it was funny. So that's done, and like I said, a lot of stitching. So out of my collection of fall things, I have two things left. I picked up just this morning while I was waiting. I had a hair appointment, so I had to wait a little bit before I could leave. Um, I just picked this up and started at um, Little House Needleworks Pumpkin, and I only just make sure I got it right side up. I just started on the wagon. I gotta scold the cat. He's chewing something. Cooper, what are you doing? <sighs> thinks he's a dog. I'm telling you, that cat thinks he's a dog. Uh, another piece of 36 randomness. French vanilla maybe is the name of this one, and it's so small it has to be just a little lop. I must have lopped it off of something else. Look at that, 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 that. Then I finished another page of my Heaven and Earth design pattern. I on my last video I told you I was working on it. It was on the Q snaps, and I wasn't pulling it off. So, you know, unimpressive when you see just a teeny little chunk of it. So, vibrant vistas, Jane Wooster Scott. Um, I gotta yell at the cat again, sorry. Cooper, what are you doing? Sorry. Cooper, get out of there. <sighs> I'm just 
gonna electrocute itself. Uh, I used to think this was going to take me forever, but I have a new pattern that's going to take me forever. Honestly, oh, <laughs> look at my needle minders. They're stuck to the, and I keep these with them because you know you're threading the you're threading a needle all the time if you park, which I'm not very good at. Can't figure out the whole parking thing. It doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I get it. I understand what the point is. I just can't stop looking everywhere else that that color appears. So here it is. Uh, I was doing the page here, so I'm up. <laughs> impressed with myself. I'm down into the second row after only two years. A little less than two years. Uh, let's see. And it actually looks like something, like more than just blobs of orange and yellow. You're starting to see a vista. Uh, doing it on that 25 count magic grid, I think it's called, that um, Heaven and Earth Design sells 25 count. I'm doing it three over one, tenth stitch. I tried all, all manner of things and that's what worked out. And <laughs> this is just the beginning. All right, I've been working on it for almost two years. <laughs> I never, eat, never eat near my sewing. But it was Christmas time and there were Hershey Kisses in the candy dish, so it happens. And when I took it off the Q-snaps, I'm like, oh, what is that? So the next sec section I'm getting to, which is one reason why I bring up the whole parking thing. Let's see if we can do this without too much. So here's this little, <laughs> here's the little building that I've just constructed down into the tree. So the next thing I'm coming to, when I looked at the pattern, it almost blew my mind. I Like, I thought there was confetti around the trees, which are not all just black. They're every dark shade you can dream up. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I am going to have to master this parking thing. <sighs> Here's a question. When you park, when you do the parking, let's just say you're working in segments of 10 across. I see sometimes people have, um, you know, their threads parked. Do you have more than one thread of the same color going? I start to wonder that when I see, like, the entire row of threads parked. And when I'm working, I know one color is down six rows, over two rows, whatever. And if I park it, I'm parking it somewhere, wherever. Up, down, back and forth. Do you have more than one thread of the same color going so that you're only working across one line in the color, especially when it's super confetti heavy, like these, you know, stone, these stones are going to be. So there, there's a question for you. I'm not going to be lurking on this again. I thought I would try to get the entire row done this year, but uh, honest to goodness, it takes me a month to get one page done because... I only work on it in the evening, and pretty much in the evening at most, I stitch about two hours. And when I start to get tired, I don't want to work on this complexity anymore. So I'm impressed uh, when people can get a page done that much sooner, but I think I just don't stitch nearly as much time as some people do. But I stitch a whole lot more than other people, so I'm pretty middle of the road. So it's taken me like a month. Um, Another project. I'm looking to see which direction to go next with projects because I have a finish of a non cross stitch uh, thing that people ask and they want to see and they talk about um, my quilting and I'm, I'm not going to show everything. Um, sometimes I post it on Instagram. Um, I do a lot of quilt work for a charity organization, so a lot of a lot of times I've sewn a lot of things that aren't going to stay here. But I'm going to show you this because this is a long time whip and it involves embroidery. So um, that was how I started in my whole needlework um, was embroidery uh, when I was a little kid. So anyway, this is a Bunny Hill design and Bunny Hill designs often incorporate embroidery and applique and quilting. So they're nice patterns, they're pricey patterns because there's a lot to the pattern in terms of all the tracing and pieces, you know, transferring and applique and whatnot. So I did this. I actually, here's the ironic part, is I did the embroidery years ago. So that's not even what was holding me up. I had all the blocks pieced from years ago. What I was hadn't done, and I do applique 
tons of applique was this. I hadn't done this, and I hadn't done this long stretch for no good reason other than I just didn't. I did all the other parts when I was in Florida once years ago, um, five years. Let's go with five years ago. And uh, these little embroideries, you could do about one in a day. So they were done. But it was a matter of you pack it up, you bring it home, you just don't unpack it again. I just didn't unpack it again. Um, I may have, I think, I, I took it on a quilt retreat, my most recent quilt retreat, which was in September, I think. Right, this is January. And, you know, the flying geese, and I got the stitching done on this, but I needed to come home to do the applique. Um, just my sewing machine and my preference for my the machine at home that, that doing the applique versus the machine I cart around places. So anyway, I have it right here, right here behind me. I finally finished it. I finally quilted it. I finally got the binding on. And I think, let's put this way. I think if I can reach, I'm going to, um, yeah, where's my finger? I'm going to hang it here for the winter. Because, you know, snowman, New York, whatever. Let's see, which direction are we? So he's done. He's done. I'm sure I can't get far enough away to get a decent picture in, but we'll try. You can just see that it, it really exists. It's really here. I'm not tall enough to get a super picture in. So you can see, I just did, I quilt right on, I quilt right over top of the embroidery. Um, and the embroidery I do, I have a, well, here I was in Florida, so I didn't even have my light box. I just hung the up, the paper pattern on a window, put the fabric up over it, and draw it on with a very fine tip pencil. Uh, there's other things that you can use, but a lot of times they're not as fine tipped, or if they're one of those fading markers, then it fades away. Or if it's one that takes water to make it go away, you're putting water on all this red, which it is just DNC, but not always. It's not always. Sometimes it's a really nice uh, silk that maybe came in the kit. So anyway, it's cute, it's cute, and it's done. Uh, it was actually a fun project. It's just how projects happen. It got neglected for no good reason. So there's that stuff. I, I'm holding off on a whip to show you. Oops. Have a few purchases. Um, Floss Tube Influence. Uh, Miss Oso Crafty showed this and I <laughs> promptly went on Amazon and bought it. Um, it was just a matter of I love Santa's Christmas classic looking. The fireplace, the mantle, the whole thing. I don't know about doing it on black, though. I'm not so sure. Uh, on I've been staying way far away from Stash Unload. And I think fate just took me there. Or maybe this was pictured on, you know, when you're on Facebook and you can see the first four or five patterns in their picture. This has been on my wish list of items I'd like to find. I know a couple people that have the pattern, but I really wanted the pattern myself. I don't want to feel like because I borrowed it, I must stitch it now. Um, Mary Gary's uh, sewing cabinet, sewing cabin, you just don't see these patterns very often. They sometimes sell, like whenever I've seen this one on Stash Unload, it's sold. I never see one unsold. I kind of had given up on ever finding it. And I don't know how it still happened to be there because the seller had, I think she said, any three patterns and it would be, uh, she would only charge you shipping once. So it's easy to just scan through and say, well, heck, let me see if I can find three things. And she had some Blackbird design and she had, I think, I'm pretty sure some other Mary Garys. I don't remember. Um, I couldn't believe it. Nobody had spoken for it. So I grabbed it right up. I think it was $14, which to me felt like a bargain because, you know, when there's something, uh, to me, appeared to be highly sought after. I know there's just something really charming about the skaters. Primitive looking. And then all these things are new purchases. When I saw this by Sue Hillis, I had to buy it pronto. You know how that is every now and then. You're like, oh, maybe I'd like that one. And you keep it in the back of your mind for when you're ordering. Um, let me just see what that is. Mm, something scratched off the color. Anyway, I had to have that 
one immediately. And since that was a necessity, I purchased the two things that I was sort of thinking about from Down Sunshine Lane. One being this. This one had been sold out, and conveniently enough, when this one came up for sale, this one was back in stock. This was the one I was going to get if I could only choose one because this other one was sold out. Aren't they cute? I love anything that's sort of in that mason jar. Um, I did an I did a bunny hill. I'm looking on here. I did a bunny hill applique, I think, and embroidery quilt. It's hanging in the basement family room where there's something in a mason jar. It made me think that maybe there was something here. Not so much. There are snowmen inside a cake keeper. Not a mason jar. And then eons ago, those I ordered from Down Sunshine Lane. That's where those came from. Long time ago, last fall, the receipt's laying around here somewhere. I'm pretty sure it was last September. I ordered from ABC Stitch. I don't order a whole lot from ABC Stitch. I like the store. I, they send me the email every Friday night. It comes and I savor it. And it's one of, I have to move this. One of the things I look forward to on my slowly coming to life on Saturday morning is to just quietly thumb through the email of what's new. And every now and then something is, a, I have to have it, like instantly then and now. And Madame Lafie is often, well, I think this might be the first one I've bought of hers. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Just It just seemed perfect. And I got really frustrated because I ordered it. And there's a ladybug. I feel a button in there, so I'm looking to see. There's a ladybug. Um, because it says, you know, two to three weeks or whatever for delivery, which I don't have a problem. So I ordered a couple other things because you know how it is. You're making your order worthwhile. And the other things came and not this. And this is what's frustrating about a small business. And I understand. I'm just saying it. I'm just saying it. I understand it. This is what happens. There's no way to look and see the status of your order on the website. You just get what you get. And you have, a, like, I had a receipt that said I had a credit of so much, which actually ended up being two items. The other one hasn't shown up yet. From September. From September. And so one year, for example, I ordered... Oh, where's the other cat? I ordered uh, the ornament issue, and it didn't come in the order, so I maybe came across it somewhere else, and I bought it, and then, I don't know how long later, it showed up in the mail. So then I have two. It, it just, it's just a tiny bit frustrating, and I know every one of you knows exactly what I'm talking about, that there's no way to check the status of an order. And I cannot possibly be the only one who... <laughs> sometimes buys things and then sort of forgets like you know because we have our favorite sites that we browse and we're thinking oh I like that I'm gonna place an order and I'm gonna get these three three four five six things whatever and then you get some of them in the mail and some more time goes by and then you're ordering something else somewhere else and you think oh yeah I really liked you know that truck with the tree and you order it. I didn't order this one twice, but this is so easy that it happens because it didn't come in the order and you kind of forgot. And I know I could write it all down, check it off, whatever. Sometimes it's fun when a package arrives and you don't really remember what's going to be in it. So anyway, I got Madame Lafie and there's still an order coming, I guess. Um, so anywho, and then another, yay, I'm so happy to see, I didn't take it out of the bag yet, was on um, Needlecraft Corner. I talked about this back in the fall, how they ha are having a Picture This Plus Fabric of the Month. You had to commit to a year. You had to commit to exactly the specifications of, you know, your count. I don't even know if I had the choice of saying I like neutrals or what. So my first one came yesterday, and it's us gray sterling and I'm thrilled because I'm sure I've said like 110 times I really like gray and there was a little gift in there which is a needle in a little case in a little bag that my cat is fascinated with so I have to keep hiding it otherwise this will be I don't know under the stove so that so I have one more whip it's a doozy uh did I show it yeah I talked about it last time because I couldn't figure out how exactly to stitch it farms on Hawk Run Hollow, Farms of Hawk Run Hollow. 
still, this is going to take me forever, forever. And I really don't want to start it over. But anyway, the first thing I have to do is show you the project bag I made. And if you don't quilt, you're going to say like, oh my God, is that a thing? Yes, that's a thing. Is saving the bias with the picture and the words and the colors on it uh, off the end of your fabric. Years ago, 10, 10, 12 years easily, I went to a quilt retreat and somebody was asking if anybody's cutting the bias or the bias, yeah, you know what I mean, this, yeah, off their quilt, salvage, salvage, that's the word I want, off their fabric, she was collecting it and she showed us she was making a quilt and we we're like, whoa, what the heck is that? So time goes by and then I, then there was a book of pattern ideas that used that. So I bought the book and I've been saving these in uh, a couple, in a bin and whatever. <laughs> and then I had a piece of, um, just a random piece, scrap piece of muslin because you sew these on a foundation. So they're all sewn, layered up, you know, you put one across the edge of the other and you sew it and then you put another one and you sew it. You're not really supposed to do it in a giant big piece like this. You're supposed to do it on squares and then sew the squares together and you can get kind of that diamond effect. But I was like, I'm doing this on this big piece of muslin, which inside the muslin, you can't see the muslin because I've used, you know, a lining on the bag. There's a big wrinkle, pucker or whatever, but it doesn't show. But I can see why you don't do it on big things. But after I was done with this, when I was halfway done, when I wasn't even halfway done, I said, I am not doing this again. I have all of my salvage edges in a bag, half a garbage bag. I could not believe once you start rummaging through that. It was in a dish pan under my table, cutting table. Just kept cramming it in there. Cannot believe once it gets air, how, how much it expands. Oh my gosh, half a garbage bag plus the pattern book is going to the leave it at the curb at my next quilt guild next time I go. So anyway, I did keep diligently working along and I made this bag and I put a magnetic thing in there, although I've talked about why I don't really care for the magnetic thing, but I had another one, so I did it. Um, everything on and its brother sticks to it. Your needle, your scissors, whatever you're using, sticks to it. So in here I have the farms of Hawk Run Hollow. I'm doing it this way. I pre I'm pretending I'm doing it this way, long on the fabric. I'm wondering if maybe when I miscut that piece of fabric last time, the 40 count, and I had to order more, if that was really my clue that I should have just thrown in the towel. Um, in the side the pattern there they show an option to do it long more square on oh, Cooper for Pete's sakes I'm doing it this way because this is how my mind envisioned it before I even knew you could make it square and probably no nah, I don't know I don't think fit on the piece I missed cut I don't think so let's just not go there so I am starting with this giant one I had the delusion that maybe I could do one a month I don't know I <laughs> 40 count fabric I need to make a working copy because this piece of pattern is going to get used and abused. I don't usually make a working copy. I just keep my stuff nice. So here's, I managed to finish that box. I showed it last time how in the counting process I was doing nine half stitches and then an X and then nine more, you know, to care, count by tens. And then I went back through and I made them all. And then I, even last night, started a little bit of this the pattern that starts the grass and it is actually a repeating pattern so you don't have to keep studying the pattern but these little it's right side up and upside down there's like 60 of them across there I think I did eight I don't know it's gonna take me forever 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 it's making my heaven and earth design pattern piece look like a walk in the park so I just don't know I don't I'm not loving the 40 count um, I don't want it any bigger than this is part of it. I, I'm tempted to put it back on my scroll rods and try that again. What I'm not loving, let me see. Let, I'm doing it with just the DMC. I feel like, and it could just be the fabric. I've done 40 count before. I feel like even just one thread over two, that it's a little crowded. So I don't really know. Is that me? I don't know. The green's looking good from here, though. So, 
I'm going to do the green. I'm going to do the sign. And then I can start on the animals. We'll see, because as you know, I have let freedom ring. I have some big honking projects, so, and I don't like, I'm not a quitter. I don't quit projects. So, that one's kind of, I'm working, I'm trying. I'm trying to love it. So, let me look at my little cheat sheet note. I, uh, I'm not even trying to keep it under any amount of time, uh, on my iPad, I have established and figured out how I can get them uploaded to YouTube beyond 15 minutes. That that I did work out. Um, it takes a very, very, very long time, though. Um, a 30-minute video could take 18 hours, 20 hours. So I'm going, I'm leaving for Florida tomorrow, I, as I mentioned, and I'm taking my iPad, and I'm going to upload it with my real internet. But i got to go to Florida get it, to get so the whole Florida thing brings up um, brings something up. I've had many people uh, suggest that we have a meetup in Florida, which is very, very, very nice, very kind, very nice of people. Um, I have not said where I go in Florida, and I'm not going to. If I've mentioned the name of some place, it's because it's not where I am. And sometimes people are asking me, and they're a lot of hours away. So, um, Florida, there's a ton of traffic, way more traffic than I'm used to. I don't love it. I have to sort of like, plan, like I kind of plan out like, okay, I'll go here today or I'll do all six of these things today. And then I don't go anywhere again for a few days. <laughs> I, you know, just the regular highway to go with the, the grocery store is on is six lanes and that doesn't include turning lanes so that's just where the grocery store is so I appreciate the offer and the other thing is is I cannot stitch without my magnify my magnifying lamp and that doesn't travel it's a floor lamp um I don't stitch in public I don't I don't do that it's weird you'll never find me in a waiting room stitching I don't know. I just, people are looking at you and trying to figure out what you're doing. That's when I take a book. That's what, that's what a book is for, reading. Uh, so um, I don't want anybody to feel offended if I don't take anybody up on that offer. Because um, to go to a Panera, I can't really stitch. I can't, I mean, I think that's the whole point of a meetup is to stitch together, and I really can't do it. Um, uh, the 40 Count Hawk Run Hollow, I have to wear magnifying glasses like take my glasses off put the magnifiers on and use the magnifying light so this just can't happen it doesn't work sometimes I go to a stitching group uh, but I have to bring a lamp an extension cord the whole nine yards like a tabletop lamp magnifier thing but you know you're there for a while you're not at Panera trying to figure out where there's a plug um, I go here locally, I have a group of ladies that, that get together every week, every week to craft um, whatever they do. I'm the only one who cross stitches, but people bring knitting and whatever, hand sewing, embroidery, whatever. I quit going a couple years ago because I can't see. I can't see to do it. Um, I, I don't always get good light. If I depend, you know, if I really need the outside light, sometimes it's not light, you know, it's a dreary day. So it was just becoming too frustrating. Too frustrating also to always have like, a super simple project that's on some high count or um, Mill Hill or whatever that maybe I can see. It just wasn't very good use of my time. So anywho, I appreciate people's offers. Maybe I'll run into you somewhere. You never know. There is a store I go to sometimes. And there's a there's another yeah there's a <laughs> there's another one, but it's a hike from where I am. Um, that I enjoy. You never know. My sister likes to go to that one. So it's a possibility we'd be making a trip there. I um said it before. I can't tell. I, people be crazy. Not you guys. Not you guys. I know. I worked in a court. You just can't be all willy-nilly and free with your um, information. I had my debit card stolen. Not out of my wallet. My debit card with a chip. Somebody was apparently, you know, carrying around a newly created one. And um, 
I checked my statement and there was money put into my account because, you know, the usual um, where they try to charge something on your card, just a dollar or something to make sure it's a good card. Uh, apparently the new trick is um, to help maybe not alert the store is to return something. So there was a return in a store in North Carolina. Um, I wasn't in North Carolina. I never used my debit card to buy anything from said store. So I called the bank and had to have my card canceled and something must have worked in their whole system and checks and balances of who's using a card and uh, using it as a visa because they wouldn't have had my pin um, because there was no phone call from my bank saying, are you in North Carolina trying to purchase something at, at a, whatever store? I never got a call like that and I never got a charge like that. So I said to the bank, I said, this is a card with a chip. What's going on? And they said, it still happens. It just still happens. So, anywho, you have to be careful. You can't, you can't have people Googling you because once they have your address, that's another thing that tipped them off to another time my card was used fraudulently to buy an Apple computer um, was that the computer was not being sent to my home address like the bank knew. This is my home address. And so the people illegally purchasing it didn't have that kind of information. They didn't have my email. They didn't have my home address. So they couldn't claim they were purchasing it and sending it to their daughter in college somewhere or whatever. Things that kind of can get around that you're not having something to sent to your home address. Um, so anyway, you just have to be careful. And like I said, I worked in a court and I saw some really scary things happen. Um, so, there you go. There you go. So next time I'm coming, to, I'll come to you as from Florida. I'll be working on Winter Sampler, and Brian Blitzstitch is blowing it out of the water. Let me tell you, <laughs> the pressure's on. Not that it's a race, nothing like that. But when I see parts that he's finished that look so cute and so cool, I cannot wait to get to that part. So. It's exciting. It's exciting to have a piece you're excited about working on. Um, so anyway, I will come to you all from sunny you-know-where and leaving behind snowy you-know-where, uh, where I'll miss my kitties. I do miss them. My husband pops in and out of Florida, um, so I have time to miss him, but then he's there. I have some other company, and I have some other family down there, so I have those things. So I'll see ya.